This afternoon's job here in the hothouse is to install a watering system. Last year I made do with overhead sprinkling and hand watering. Now the problem with overhead sprinkling is not all crops really like overhead sprinkling and some can be damaged and it does increase the likelihood of fungus in certain types of things such as tomatoes. Heading lettuce certainly don't like overhead sprinkling they tend to decay once the head starts to form. So what I want to put in is a system which allows me to water each bed individually by the appropriate method for the bed. For some that will be using low level sprinklers for others it'll be using a soak hose type arrangement where the water can go straight into the ground. So I've got some poly pipe and some fittings to put together. My concept is that rather than putting a tap on each bed I'm going to try and use stop ends so that I can simply plug in the appropriate irrigation system onto that bed and when it's unplugged that it won't come out. I don't know how well this is going to work so it's all a bit of an experiment. See how we go. The thing I like about this type of irrigation is that you can put it together with little more than a knife and a pair of pliers. It's so quick, so easy and it's reasonably cheap too. This light gauge poly pipe it's very cheap to buy and goes in place very quickly. Just outside the grow house here I have modified a tap so that I've got a dedicated tap to run the water into the uh, hothouse and I'll simply turn that on and off when I want water in. So it's just a matter of putting a tail on and a filter. Now a filter is a very important part of this type of system because if you're not filtering the, the water, particularly when it's like my water and comes from a spring, there's a very high risk of blocking up any sprinklers or soak hoses are going to block quickly too. So these are really important. Don't skip on putting a filter in. Right, these just push together. My water supply is gravity fed from a spring, which is really fantastic. It means that there is not high pressure coming through and these fittings are not likely to blow apart at all. That looks good. Water flows. So that'll be reasonably easy for me to get at and clean that filter which will need to be done on a fairly regular basis because of the water has a fair bit of sediment in it. So in the corner here I'm putting in a T because I'm going to run up and over to the other side of the hothouse because it's down the other side where the beds come that I want to run my distribution system. So let's just cut the pipe and put this T in. Okay, that's got me across to the other side where I'm wanting to run it. I can now run along. What I'm putting in in the middle of each of these beds is a T-joiner 
that comes to 12 millimeter that will then connect across to one of these stop ends. I'm using this smaller size here because it was very expensive to buy these stop ends in the larger size. So I'm cutting the pipe in what is approximately the middle of the bed. And then fitting this joiner in the I'm doing the same as this on each of the beds. The wriggle bits them in nicely. At the end here, where it would seem reasonable to use a elbow, instead of doing that, I've used the same tee as everywhere else and run on with a piece of pipe and have this so that it can slide and it can open. The purpose of that is that it allows you to flush the line if there's something in it, there's dirt in it, blocking it and also this piece up here often is a place where dirt will settle whereas if it ran straight through it would come through into your sprinklers. So this is just a piece of 40 millimeter PVC pipe and that will slide over to close it. But right now I'm going to turn it on and flush the system before I go any further just in case there is something that is lodged in the pipe that I don't know about. Okay, water has arrived. Will it run out the end? Possibly not because there's too many. Oh! But, yeah, so that should clear the system of anything that's sitting in it. Now I've cut some short lengths of 12 millimeter pipe to connect these stop ends on. Okay, we'll see how this fits. So if we tighten this up, let's see if it'll hold. It feels fairly good. I can put a Right, piece on that, so I'll put those all on. Okay, everything's connected now, so time to turn it on and see what happens. Well, straight away there's a bit of leakage here, which is not unusual. Maybe it's just a little bit of tighten, or maybe it's just the back pressure. That seems better, so maybe it is just how all that's tightened up. Inside I've connected this one dripper hose which appears to be working okay and I don't see a lot of leakage at the connection which is good and I've connected these couple of beds with sprays now I put the sprays in the poly pipe which isn't working that well because this poly pipe's come out of a roll and wants to curl so the sprinklers are not staying very level. The water's running fine though, and that's not a problem. I think probably the best idea would be to put these sprinklers in some short pieces of PVC where that's straight and stable, and connect that to the system with a flexible hose. So that's what I might work on doing later. The stop ends appear to be working quite well. They'd probably work even better if they were a more expensive one. I bought really cheap ones not knowing how it would go and thinking that here in the uh, grow house they wouldn't be exposed to a lot of UV anyway. So that's a fairly simple irrigation system set up and quite quickly and cheaply it should allow me to water in here with simply the turning a tap and if I wanted I could put a timer on so that I didn't even have to do that. 